Hello and welcome to the new creator economy, the latest iteration for the space with the rise of crypto as well as Web3. My name is Oli Vosayev, I lead global community here at Antler. We are a global early stage fund investing in companies from inception all the way up to Series C. Throughout this conversation, we'll be unpacking the new creator economy and why so many of us are becoming creators, especially as a preferred career choice. We'll be diving into the impact of Web3 for creators as well as platforms, such as the 140 companies we recently listed in our annual creator economy report. And we'll also be diving into the characteristics behind unicorn companies in this space. If that's not enough, we'll be diving into the trends happening um, in geographies such as Latin America, India, and Southeast Asia, and the vertical trends happening in gaming, music, and NFTs. I think it's really important to also highlight the challenges and opportunities creators as well as platforms are going to face in the future. So we'll be diving into those later in the episode. So let's get going. A question to you all, how many American high school students do you think plan on becoming creators as a preferred career choice? 29%. This is the creator economy where people like you or I can make an income anywhere in the world by doing what we love. This could be podcasting, music, gaming, you could be diving into crypto, writing, or you could also just be doing your own personal adventures, such as giving advice on TikTok on where to go traveling. This is becoming so much easier for creators where you no longer need expensive equipment. You can become a creator today from your smartphone, reaching millions of people within days. And you'll, in turn, your revenue opportunities are so much greater. What's staggering now about the creator economy space is the consumers and the super fans are no longer buying from the historic brands we've seen in the future they're actually starting to buy from the creators themselves because they trust them. Why is so many of us becoming creators? I guess you might ask. Well, we're entering this world where everything is becoming permissionless, where we don't want a boss, we want the autonomy, we want to make an impact in the world with the self-expression, and we want the lifestyle, which I think is a really important factor, meaning we want to make an income anywhere in the world by doing what we love on our own terms. And also as we dive into the new creator economy, we want to own the upside, meaning all of these platforms we're contributing towards, we don't actually have any upside based on their success. So this is part of the new creator economy, which we'll dive into later in the episode. It's a huge category to watch, but actually it's taken quite a few years to come to fruition. This may be a good time to explain how we got excited about the space. Um, Back a couple of years ago, I was podcasting, interviewing some really interesting names on how they've overcome their own personal challenges. And this was before the pandemic, had about 80,000 listeners. However, being a creator is really hard and it took a ton of time to eventually monetize. Um, however, the experience was just awful. The pandemic also came along where, you know, a number of people were starting to be made redundant um, and quite a few people had the wake up call. Some of them may have uh, been meeting where they really started to ask themselves what do they want to do in the future. So this is where the creator economy really started to accelerate. But I thought it'd be helpful to actually take a step back and explain where it all began um, up to where we are today. So back in the 1980s, when the Web 1.0 era was here, the information being provided was directly from the creators, meaning the creators could interact with us as the fans, but the experience was bad. And also the, the ways how we could communicate with the creators themselves was really bad, meaning the revenue opportunities for the creator was, was very limited. However, if we accelerate 20 years to the early 2000s, the Web 2.0 era came along where the creator economy back in the day really started to accelerate, meaning the new types of platforms being, um, being created enabled fans and creators to all interact with each other. And of course, this in terms means new revenue opportunities for the creators where they could dive into sponsorship, advertising, tipping, brand deals, direct monetization subscriptions, 
such as charging us as the fans a direct fee for us to interact with them. And the experience, most importantly, was so much better. What's crucial about the uh, Web 2.0 platforms was the, and still is today, the creators had a global footprint. However, a ton of challenges emerged in the Web 2.0 creator economy space, which has accelerated the new types of technologies where we are today with the new creator economy, the uh, Web 3.0, where essentially this means we are all being rewarded some form of upside based on our contributions towards platforms as well as communities. And how we think about the new creator economy, we think there'll be full key characteristics in companies emerging in the space. Community will be first, meaning all of us should be compensated in some degree based on our contributions towards platforms as well as communities. And the upside may not be financial. It may be something completely different, such as having more personal interactions with your favorite creators. The second characteristic is owning the audience. Historically, with the Web 2.0 platforms, we haven't really had many insights into who our audience are, where they were coming from, the data actually behind those platforms. Web 3.0 changes all of that with this open transparency, meaning there is nothing to hide. We've kind of already mentioned this, but the upside I really do think is the fundamental shift for the creator economy 3.0, where all of us are being compensated in some degree. And if this works, I think we're entering into two new eras. We're, we're entering the open economy and we're also you know, potentially entering the space where if this does succeed, um, this potentially creates a whole new uh, generation of wealth. However, it's fair to say this comes with a bunch of challenges as well as the impact. If we look at the challenges and the opportunities this may have for creators, um, if we take one example, for uh, for example, the Spotify uh, as an example. So there are 7 million music artists on Spotify and only 0.2% of them make $60,000 in revenue a year. The same as YouTube, um, for the typical YouTuber who has a million subscribers, they only earn $60,000 in advertising revenue a year. And historically, you know, we've seen with the Web 2.0 platforms, the discoverability for creators is really bad, meaning the platforms are providing the infrastructure and the creators are actually doing all the work. They're bringing all the audience to the platform and the platforms are still taking anywhere from 20 up to 50% take rates. And the take rates mean basically the revenue being taken away from the creator based on the platform's infrastructure. And, you know, although the creator economy is a really exciting opportunity, especially for the creators, and it's a new, um, you know, is potentially the, the future of work, is an incredibly lonely journey. And this potentially enables uh, and disables the creator into you know, really scaling their individuality, which we'll be diving into later in the episode. You know, this new, I guess with every new space, the web free education is also gonna be a really important factor as these new types of platforms emerge. However, if we look at the impacts, most importantly, I highlighted earlier, this does potentially create a whole new generation of wealth, but what's more staggering is the creators are becoming the new economies. They are no longer just the product. And I guess this encompasses, you know, what we've just talked about. They are becoming the new economies where they are actually the ones now control as we enter this new creator economy and the rise of crypto. So we've talked a little bit around the creator economy, where it began, the history behind it, with the rise, um, where it began with Web 1.0 uh, to where we are today with Web 3.0 the challenges creators and platforms have faced to date. I thought it'd be useful to dive into some of the trends. So some of the trends happening in geographies such as uh, Latin America, India, Vietnam, as well as Korea. And we'll be diving into the uh, trends happening in industries such as gaming, entities, as well as music. So to start off with Latin America, what do you think the average daily consumption of audio is in Latin America? 
14 hours, 40, 40 minutes. Latin America is one of the highest audio consumption geographies in the world, with the average Brazilian also spending 10 hours a day online. This could be shopping, as an example. 40% of the average consumers in Latin America has actually bought from a creator. The infrastructure in Latin America is actually a really interesting uh, case study to watch. Although, you know, 50% of the creators um, in the region only earn over $100 a month. Some of the reasons why this is happening is, you know, the industry and the geography in the region is still very new, meaning the standardization and the infrastructure is, is very new. However, some of the trends we're watching is especially around e-commerce, where we saw here 63% uh, of e-commerce grew in the region in 2020. India. Um, India is a really interesting case study. Just, uh, just under a billion and a half people in the country. There are now over 50 million creators alone just in India. The, there are 100,000 creators who now have um, over 2 million subscribers. And alone in 2021, $1.7 billion was contributed towards the Indian economy. 72% 72, 72 of YouTube creators, especially in India, um, say is an important, say, sorry, ad revenue is an important part of, of their income. Um, what we're seeing also in India, staggeringly, is much of this whole web free craze is being talked about in India, and much of it is coming from India. Meaning, if this does come to fruition, we think the next big opportunities in India will be in gaming, commerce, as well as payments. Vietnam and Korea, one of my favorite countries in the world, and also just one of the smallest. We have seen two case studies uh, recently that have emerged from the region, such as Axie Affinity, where essentially the Axie Affinity is a play to earn uh, game where you can exchange gaming NFTs with uh, fellow gamers, as well as Squid Games. Squid Games had 1.65 billion hours of airtime within the first two weeks. What we're seeing with the Lassam region is um, much of this is coming from China, meaning they are very focused on mobile first and entertainment. What we saw with TikTok, which now has over a billion users, much of this is diving into the attention economy. How have our attentions decreased over the last couple of years? What was interesting about the TikTok case study was um, they basically are starting to think, they basically know how we think. And how we think the TikTok algorithm works is they'll give you a bunch of um, videos and depending how long you spend on the videos is the type of content you may enjoy consuming. So I guess what we've encompassed and what we've learned from China as well as Southeast Asia is mobile and entertainment is very much at the front of every platform entering the space. Gaming, if we quickly dive into gaming, there are now over 3 billion gamers globally with a total addressable market of $200 billion a year. Historically, some of the um, challenges we've seen in gaming is if you're an avid gamer, you have to buy multiple avatars um, across multiple games. However, as we enter the new creator economy and um, where many of us have the upside and the ownership of these platforms, we think the new creator economy in gaming will be you no longer have to buy multiple avatars, which you can't use across multiple games. You will be able to buy avatars um, which you will own, which you can use in multiple games. Um, some of the challenges historically have also been Apple's take rate, 35% of in-app purchases. Um, and also, you know, that meaning the transactions are is very much transactional, is not community first. So if we summarize where we think gaming will go next, you will be able to have multiple avatars which you own, which you will be able to play in multiple games. And community will be very much the front of every company in the gaming space. This is similar to music where, you know, we mentioned earlier 0.2% of more than 7 million musicians on Spotify only make $50,000 a year in royalties. Where we see the new creator economy emerging in the music space is the musicians or the artists will become the new type of record labels. 
meaning they will be able to sell directly to their fans because they have the distribution. We saw earlier that um, we spoke to a couple of music artists in the past and some of their record labels actually keep the um, creator's revenue for one year until they get paid. This is completely unfair. I mean, we look at someone like Spotify, they have 7 million musicians and only 0.2% of them are making $50,000 a year. We mentioned earlier that the creators are becoming the new economies and no longer just a product. And I think music is a great way of demonstrating that where if the music artists have a general misfollowing and they have the distribution effects, why should they um, have a platform that is essentially taking all the re revenue? And this also actually very much refers to NFTs uh, and artists in, 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 in the past. Um, you know, artists have historically have really struggled to find digital ways of monetizing. NFTs, non-fungible tokens, is a new way of how artists can make an income. This could be backstage passes, it could be exclusive passes such as galleries, um, or you could be earning, um, or you could have a piece of, uh, you could own a piece of the upsides on your favorite artists. And we saw this, for example, with Beeple, um, who's a digital artist, who sold one of the highest grossing NFTs in the world for $69 million um, last year. The beauty with NFTs is, is very much about community. Um, if you are spending or willing to spend a considerable amount of your income on a piece of digital art, you're most likely to be really engaged with the creator and most likely very engaged with the community. So non-fungible tokens, NFTs, I think is a really interesting way on how creators, they could be musicians, artists, or it could be even you know, your typical creator. Um, this is potentially a whole new way on how they can monetize and interact with the fans um, through NFTs uh, as well as DAOs. So this is kind of where we are today, the new creator economy, where this is where we um, publish our creator economy reports, especially highlighting the latest uh, creator economy platforms in the space. So you'll see on the top level here, these are the web free creator economy platforms where the platforms are allowing creators to monetize in a new way and rewarding their community members um, some form of upside. The creator tools are the underlying platforms that are allowing the creators to, to monetize um, their individuality. We'll also be putting the report in the show notes below in case you haven't seen it, but um, the report highlights these companies as, as well as what we're covering today. However, for this to succeed, you know, I definitely think we need to be thinking about the creator middle class. There are millions and millions of creators today um, who want to make an income, but they don't have the freedom to do so. We have highlighted the YouTube and Spotify case studies, you know, in the future, if these types of platforms are going to be taking a huge amount of revenue away from the creator, then what does this mean for the creator to succeed? So there are going to be a bunch of challenges as well as opportunities for both platforms as well as creators. If we start with the platforms uh, for now, the challenges, you know, the, the challenges the platform should be thinking about is how should they be providing distribution and discovery to the creator? Um, meaning they shouldn't just be thinking about that cap table and what the take rate should be. They should be thinking about the cycle for the creator. You know, we, we can think about this, how we almost join a company. When you join the company, you may not stay there forever, but you may stay there for three or five years, or you may stay there for 20 years. It's very similar to the creator. The creator may do this for three to five years, but some will do this for 20 years. So thinking about how platforms can retain the loyalty uh, for the creator is gonna be really important. The market sizing for the creator economy space is actually really difficult to estimate. However, what we're interested in um, is exploring and discovering how many platform leaders can there be in the creator economy space niche vertical. So niche vertical, for example, which we highlighted in the creator economy report, which we recently highlighted. The third challenge is, uh, the third challenge the platform should be thinking about is around the education to the creators, um, especially around crypto and Web3. You know, there is today very limited, you know, um, I would say 
profit information that can be reliable for the creators that they trust. Everyone thinks they're a creator um, and we're free experts, especially on platforms like Twitter. So I think, you know, platforms should be really carefully thinking about how can they provide that accurate information to the creator where they know the creator can trust them and also the creator, you know, can trust um, what they're saying is factual. The fourth challenge is going to be the governance and the privacy. As we enter the new creator economy, and if this whole space is going to turn into a space where, you know, we do create a whole new generation of wealth, um, the governance and privacy is going to have to be a lot more stringent, especially from governments, as this is essentially new financial types of products, meaning the consumers are going to have to be protected. However, you know, this does potentially lead us to a whole new load and a whole new way of how we can make an income. Um, the barriers to entry are very low for creators, and what's staggering today is creators can actually make an income um, really actually based off only 100 true fans. Um, and you know, understanding how these creators um, want to make an income for the next five or 20 years by monetizing from their individuality, I think is a huge opportunity both for the platforms um, to watch, but also for the creators and creators to collaborate with each other. The challenges and the creators, um, if we focus on the challenges, the language barriers, I think is a really interesting one to talk about. So if you are a creator, for example, and you only speak Portuguese, your market share is very small because not every single person globally is to use Portuguese. So I think actually, you know, this kind of refers to the opportunities for platforms. How can they provide opportunities to the creators to be global from day one? Meaning, is there a way, maybe it's machine learning, where any content uploaded to any platform can be translated into any language for the creator? If this happens, the creator is no longer local, they are global creators. Um, the second challenge I think for the creators will be um, discovering and making sure they don't burn out too quickly. I mentioned briefly earlier in the episode, you know, the personal story on how I became a creator is a really difficult journey and you can very, very quickly get burnt out. The income is not the same as if you were to get a job. Um, you're basically running your own company where you're managing the entire process from editing to uh, scaling your individuality to the revenue opportunities to all the other things you have to think about. So I think, you know, the platform is going to have to do a lot more um, work on how they avoid creators burning out. And I think, actually, you know, they, they should be doing this. And if they were to do it, um, it potentially creates much stronger loyalty and a much stronger community with the platforms as well as the creator economy um, ecosystem. We mentioned how the platform should be educating the, the creators on how to become web free native. Um, so we probably won't talk about that too much, but I think the fourth challenge will be, you know, how do creators essentially become their own company? If a creator was to go out today, they can't go and raise their own pre-seed round or seed round um, they're having to rely on on banking loans. Um, so I think this is going to be a really interesting shift. And in, you know, how do creators essentially raise their own money to run to run their own company? We're seeing this a little bit in crypto, where the uh, super fans can actually buy into the creator from day one and have some form of upside based on their lifetime uh, royalties or their you know lifetime means of income. However, the opportunities today, you know, again, we mentioned earlier, you can become a creator today and you can be global pretty much from day one if you choose the right platform, such as TikTok. You have so many more diverse revenue opportunities as we enter the new creator economy space. And if you're, you know, becoming a creator, you can actually do this from anywhere in the world. You no longer have to be in one city. If you want to be sitting on the beach and doing your TikToks, you can do this. Um, and, you know, we're seeing now community is going, to, is going to become the biggest asset for both platforms as well as creators. And we're seeing this today, you know, TikTok, I think, is an amazing example, which we've covered a few times. Um, we've seen people like Mr. Beast, um, who launched his own uh, burger chain last year. Um, because his community is so large, uh, they generated $15 million in revenue just by sending burgers in 48 hours. 
This was all through dark kitchens. Um, another example is another creator who I'm personally really fond of called Josh Richards. Um, he hated all the energy drinks on the market, so he created his own called Annie Energy. Um, we've seen the same with Kylie Jenner with Kylie's, uh, Kylie's Cosmetics. Okay, so we've talked quite a bit around uh, the new creator economy, the rise of crypto, the challenges and opportunities both platforms and creators are going to face in the future. Um, we are starting to see quite a few unicorns come out of the space, which is great and really interesting to watch. Um, so I thought it'd be helpful maybe just to give a quick overview on some of the characteristics we're seeing in creator economy companies um, since 2020, 20, sorry, since 2020. So since 2020, there have only been one creator economy unicorn in 2021, which was an amazing year for the creator economy. You know, I think especially it's accelerated by COVID, there were 13 new creator economy companies. And this year alone, we have seen, um, you know, a couple, we've seen three. So the average Series A round for the creator economy company was $13.5 million. And interestingly, it only took them six years on average to reach unicorn um, status. Unfortunately, we're still lacking the diversity element where only one of the 15 creator economy companies have had a female founder. However, some of the trends we're seeing, um, which quite a few have female founders, include gaming, live streaming, fan interactions, as well as creator management. What's interesting, Europe is still yet to produce a creator economy unicorn, which is really frustrating. Um, why is this happening, you might be asking. So one of the elements where we think this might be um, happening is, you know, I think Europeans are still quite reserved and they're cautious on how they spend their, their means of income. For example, only 36% of Europeans have a credit card. If we compare this to the US, 75% of Americans have a credit card. Um, however, we're excited about the space. We're watching a couple of companies in Europe in the creative economy space, and hopefully they'll be, uh, they'll, they'll be on this list within the next couple of years. So what's next? Um, this was actually our 2020 creative economy report, and this was very focused on audience creation and audience monetization. You know, the types of platforms that really got the creators going. Um, However, we fast forward just 12 months, and it's actually shorter than that, it's about 10 months. We've seen this whole category explode where you know, creators are very focused on exploring, exploring additional ways on how they can make an income, especially through crypto. And the biggest characteristic we saw in, in these types of platforms were two things. One, they are enabling creators to reward, to reward um, their community based on their contributions, but secondly, community is becoming the biggest characteristic um, for creators. The reason why community is becoming the biggest characteristic for creators is as the creators start to develop new ways of making an income and you know, the fans start hurry, having tighter connections with those creators, at the end of the day, that's all community. And if you are a creator or you're a fan and the fan absolutely loves you as the creator, you're most likely gonna, 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 you're most likely gonna go and tell all of your friends about this creator, meaning this potentially creates new types of network effect strategies, both for you as the fan, but also as well as the creator. But we're also seeing you know, new types of creator funds emerge. TikTok launched a billion dollar creator fund to entice creators. I think one of the takeaways we learned from the annual creator economy report, which we published, was that it's becoming fiercely competitive for these social companies to remain competitive, but also to entice creators. So they've needed to starting, they've needed to identify new types of ways on how they can support those creators and how the creators can remain on the platform. I'm personally really excited about TikTok. I think TikTok is only at day one. Um, by launching on TikTok, if you can reach millions of um, subscribers within days, within weeks, um, that potentially is becoming a really exciting category and trend, um, an opportunity in particular for creators, especially if they're new to the space. So we've covered a lot and uh, we have run out of time. There's, there is so much more to cover. 
However, you know, if you're not serious about this space, I think if we look at the image on the right hand side, um, is a really interesting example on why you should be serious about the space. So Mr. B earned $54 million in revenue last year. Jake Paul earned $45 million. This is some of this is more than some of the CEOs um, that are earning on Wall Street. And this is just the beginning. And we're personally really excited about the space. Um, and, you know, it goes without saying, if you're building the space, we'd love to hear from you. And we, we would even just love to support you um, where we can, if that is introducing you to potential creators or just by giving some uh, personal advice on, you know, whether you should go next. However, I hope this has been uh, useful to you. We've, we're still writing and actively writing about the space. And we have, a, uh, we have quite a few resources you should check out if you haven't seen it yet. One is, what is the creator economy? So this is something we actually wrote um, just as the creator economy was emerging. Um, our second resource is around our 2021 creator economy report. The third is the attention economy. Um, I kind of highlighted that earlier, but highlighting how have our attentions decreased by 10 to 15 seconds over the last five or six years. The fourth resource is around the NFTs and the rise of digital ownership. And the fifth and final is our latest creator economy report. So we've covered a lot. Um, I would love to stay in touch with you if you're building this space feel free to reach out. Um, we'll be writing a lot more about this space so we can help any, uh, we can help in any way, let us know. Um, but this has been a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing you as a creator on TikTok very soon. Thank you.